Oh, thank you, Daniel. I want to talk about this for a second. I'm talking about poetry, depression, and the youth in Utah. Now, Nathaniel, the poet we're remembering in the second round, started a group on Facebook called Poems for People. It's a group where if you were having a hard day, you could go into that group and say, hey, I really need a poem right now. And then a poet in the group would leave a poem in the comments. That's part of what inspired the Dollar Compliments Project, where I write compliments for people and send them in the mail. Now, poetry is not extracurricular. It's not a hobby. It's a requirement. It's a necessary skill. The ability to understand and express emotions, and also understand the emotions expressed by other people, is so important. And it's like we've forgotten, especially in school. Now who here, show of hands, has gone to the bookstore and purchased a book of poetry in the last six months? Three. What about the last year? You a little more? What about ever in their lives? Some more. Okay, you know how large the poetry section is at Barnes & Noble? It's one shelf. It's one shelf. And only a fraction of those books are poets that are still alive. Now, think back to high school. I'm gonna drop this one. Uh, high school. Remember the kids who were into poetry at high school? Maybe you were that kid. Maybe a couple of you were that kid. We're at an open mic. Some of you were definitely that kid. Yep, pretty but much. What's people's idea of kids who are into poetry in high school? Yeah, the black clothes. Yeah, the little emos. Yeah, the emo kids. And someone just say, the emos. <laughs> like they're some sort of like class of people. <laughs> uh, yeah, they're depressed, right? They're depressed. They're angry. They hate their parents. They hate school. They hate society. They don't like themselves. I'm letting you know right now, that's what's called a spotlight fallacy. Poets aren't more depressed than anybody else. They're just brave enough to talk about it. They're just brave enough to express it. And because they express it, because they're the only ones talking about it, it's like they're the only ones that seem depressed. But people with depression, they're all around us. All the time. Suicide is the leading cause of death in youth in Utah. From ages 10 to 17. I took that from the Utah Health Department. The leading cause of death. Why is Utah so bad at this? Why are we so afraid of expressing our emotions? Why are we terrified of vulnerability? Why are we afraid of being judged? We're afraid of being that kid that everybody says, oh, you're the emo kid, you're depressed, you are all black, you're one of those guys, you're one of those poetry guys. A study by Crossroads Collaborative concluded that youth have the big topics on their minds. They're thinking about these things. They're thinking about race and gender, sexuality, politics. They're very engaged in this. But more and more in school, they're silenced. They're not allowed to talk about this. And a different study by Florida International University noted that students who are silenced feel more hopeless, feel more depressed, and eventually, they fail academically. Parents don't support spoken word programs in schools because they're afraid of what the students have to say. They're afraid that the kids are gonna do a poem like the one I did just now, about I'm depressed and my parents don't understand it. They'd rather get rid of me than understand, so why would I tell them? 
Why would I express this? When any negative feelings are rejected, rather than shared and accepted. Parents put a lot of pressure on their students, on the kids. They have to succeed religiously. They have to follow their morality. They have to follow the path the parents have set for them in life. Like there is only one path. And if you stray from the straight and narrow path, then you fail. We're going to drop this. Failure isn't only an option. Failure is a requirement for growth. And if we tell kids that their lives are over because they fail, of course suicide is going to be the leading cause of death in youth in Utah. If we tell them there's only one way to live, and then they don't live that way, they don't fit that box, of course they're going to feel like they failed. Now, Robert Frost said this, poetry is when emotion has found its thought, and the thought has found words. Robert Frost is one of those old dead dudes that's on the poetry show of Barnes & Noble. But he's right. We teach kids how to be factory workers. We teach them how to be standardized. We teach them to be the same. But we don't live in the industrial revolution anymore. We live in the information age. The ability to speak emotionally and understand emotionally the failure to do that, it's literally killing us. It's critical that we learn how to express this emotion and accept it when other people do too. Now here's what some kids who are in the uh, Poetry Slam programs at some high schools have to say. These Poetry Slam programs are almost entirely run by students almost exclusively run by students, because the students know this. They know they need this outlet, and they have to make it for themselves. This student from American Fork High School said, my experience with poetry impacted my social and mental health in a profoundly positive way. Just because they're expressing negative feelings, it doesn't mean that their mental health is worse. It means they're talking about it. And that's the first big step. Now another student said this, this student's from Copper Hills. Slamming spoken word taught me empathy. So not only does it make your mental health better to express, but learning about other people, it helps you communicate and it helps you understand. This is critical in the workplace. How many workplaces are social? How many people work in retail or sales? That's like all of our jobs. We have to interact with people. We're not just sitting on a factory line like Charlie Chaplin, like hammering out rivets. We interact with one another, talking to each other, understanding each other. That's what America is today in the information age. And you go to Facebook and it's all a dumpster fire because we don't know how to understand each other. We don't have this empathy because it's not taught to us. Poetry programs are very small. Think of the poets they taught you in your poetry class. Robert Frost, Shakespeare, Poe, old dead white guys talking about old dead white guys stuff. But what about the poets that are alive? There's millions of views for poets like Neil Hilborn and Sabrina Benane, even I have half a million. Not to brag. <laughs> but it's true. It's not boring. The main consumers of this are youth. They want this. They know how necessary this is. And if we don't let them have it, if we don't support them in this, the damage it will cause to our future is near irreparable. That's where we get things like bigotry and hate and self-hatred. It comes from our inability to be emotional, to be sensitive, and to be sensitive of other people. When did sensitivity become a goddamn sin? When did it
to become bad, right? During the Cold War, I guess. Now, I'm done with dead poet societies. I want live poet societies. I want people that are alive to talk to other people who are alive. And yeah, the historical dudes, sure, they're important. But that's not where we start. We start with each other. And then we can move back. We start with right now. We start with the person in front of us. What we're doing here at Greenhouse Effect Open Mic, we're giving you space to be vulnerable. We're giving you space to be brave. Poets aren't depressed, they're just more brave about it. And that's what this open mic is for. Nobody here is gonna judge you. That's why we created the space like we did. So that it's open. So that we can deconstruct this nonsense that being vulnerable is bad or unmasculine or not powerful, it's strength. The real people who are afraid, the real people who are weak, are the cowards who can't express themselves. Because the only thing that they'll know, if you can't express yourself emotionally, you'll end up expressing yourself violently. There's a reason why addiction recovery programs and the prison and youth detention centers are clawing for poets like me to come and teach workshops in their class even though they can't afford it. Because they know that these people need to learn how to be vulnerable. They need to learn how to express themselves in healthy ways and how to accept that expression from others. So if you're a teacher, if you're an educator, think about it. Think about teaching emotional intelligence along with mathematical and scientific intelligence. What if that was just as important? What if instead of doing a standardized test for kids who are good at STEM, we helped grow the kids who are good at expressing themselves and let them share that with other people? Teaching kids to code all the time, that's great. There's lots of coding jobs, but AI is gonna take that someday. Emotions are ours though. It's what's human about us. And we get to keep it. So I'm gonna start Greenhouse Effect Open Mic. This is our Alive Poet Society. And this is every Sunday night at 7.30. And it's not just poetry, it's music, stories, jokes, whatever you wanna share. Thank you.